After anti-impeachment Democrat Jeff Van Drew switched parties, some progressives are calling out the DCCC's embrace of him in 2018. Justice Democrats co-founder specifically pointed to Tansy Youngblood, who also ran for the New Jersey seat, but the DCCC endorsed Van Drew instead. Now, as the 2020 election approaches, several candidates who didn't get DCCC support in the last cycle are trying again. Justice Democrats have thrown their support behind Car Eastman's bid in Nebraska. She nearly won in 2018. But now the DCCC is considering running another Democrat against her. Joining us to discuss all of this and more is Executive Director of Justice Democrats, Alexandra Rojas. Great to see you, Alexandra. How's Thanks it going? Thanks for having me. Yeah, great good, to see you. Good, doing great. First, let me get your reaction to Jeff Van Drew's switch here after the DCCC backed him. I mean, it, it really annoyed me because it's always progressives who get asked this, like, party unity, are you definitely going to support our number? Are you definitely with us, et cetera, et cetera, when it's really these moderate centrist corporatist type that you have to worry about stabbing you in the back? Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And it's going to be at the detriment, I think, of the Democratic Party, right? It, it, this question of what do we stand for? And this is a repeated instance. It's Cara Eastman here in Nebraska. They've done this uh, to Mike Siegel, who's running out in Texas. Um, and with even candidates they're backing right now, they have were voted in the 2016 Republican primary. Mm -hmm. And so just calling into question, like, what is a Democrat and what are the values that we stand for is super critical to, I think, the ecosystem that surrounds Democratic politics and an impacts you know the presidential race right now it certainly impacts obviously these house districts where we could have champions like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or Ayanna Presley uh, fighting for you know the solutions that we need right now that match the scale scope and urgency but they're not right I would rather fault that Alexandra talk about also so this was an, an older story but it's not just the DCCC endorsement it's that they actively blacklist I think candidates from being able to work with consultants and they, they put pressure on the kind of the professional democratic apparatus around who is allowed to work with whom and and how are you guys pushing back against that well, I mean, it's, it's a very real problem, yeah. right, for working class candidates to be able to have at least even the attempt of access to the same resources that maybe traditionally supported Democrat candidates or folks that can self-fund their campaigns do. So right off the bat, it's just hurting the infrastructure that supports regular people from entering the halls of Congress. Um, but it has uh, backfired in some way in that there's a whole uh, swell of different think tanks, groups, consultants that want to support candidates like Cara Eastman, right, uh, down in Nebraska, that want to support candidates like Jessica Cisneros, because they see in this moment, right, where we have to defeat the most corrupt president of this time, we need champions in Congress that are still, regardless of who is president, going to fight for Medicare for all, going to fight for a Green New Deal. Um, and it's really important that we remind voters, right, that this time period uh, before the general election is where we get to decide the direction of where we we want the party to go. So well said. T talk a little bit more about Car Eastman and why you see that race in particular as important and significant this time. Absolutely. So for for Cara, uh, we at Justice Democrats, you'll notice that we back a majority of candidates that are going up against corporate Democrats, right? Um, Cara is one of the few red to blue seats that we are supporting this cycle, mm. and so it is our. I think movement's best chance to elect a true progressive champion in the Midwest who is going to fight for Medicare for all, who is going to fight for what we need to do on climate, who is rejecting corporate PAC and corporate lobbyist donations. Uh, and in 2018, a recent story I think uh, came out by The Intercept that showed uh, the DCCC is literally recruiting another candidate against her in the primary. Even though she almost won last yeah, time, right, without notes. their support. Yeah. Less Talk than 5,000 votes. Yeah. Less yeah. One point, she lost by 1.9% with barely any DCCC support. They actually supported uh, the former Democratic congressman who was a Republican who lost to the current Republican in the seat over Cara in the primary. She still won the primary hmm. and then backed out at the last minute. So what is she running her. on? Tell us a little bit about that. Is it is it, is it a so national Democratic message that we would understand or is it uniquely Nebraskan and Midwestern? It's uniquely Nebraskan yeah. and Midwestern in the sense that everywhere right now, right, there's huge swaths of the Midwest that are getting impacted by our climate climate crisis mm. as we speak, right? And these are predicted to get worse and worse, right, as the year goes on. Uh, when you talk about income inequality and just uh, where, you know, bad trade deals have ravage this part of the country. Omaha, Nebraska is one of those states. Um, a number of other populist proposals that she is running on in comparison to, I think, like, where voters had an option, right? A Democrat who is trying to court Republicans or right. the actual Republican. In this case, she's not, she's going to be honest and run as a true progressive on, yeah. I think, the solutions that 
you know, Omaha needs right now. I think it's so telling that the DCCC would endorse against her because typically if you have a candidate who ran a good campaign, yeah. who comes close, they are the obvious person to run. They've built the infrastructure, they've learned the lessons, they've assembled the team, they're ready to go. That's usually the logical person yeah. that you support. So what is the DCCC's problem here? Why are they going in a different direction? Right, and I mean, we want to add to the majority, not take away from it. And so to actively disinvest or recruit another candidate is straining resources right. that are obviously needed <laughs> at the very top and also at the very bottom in places like this where we have such an opportunity, right, to add to the Democratic majority. And the only two reasons that we can see, right, is the fact that Cara is unbought by corporate interests. She's rejecting all corporate PAC and corporate lobbyists money, and it's the agenda that she's running on. Um, and I think that this fear, honestly, of what the Republican is going to, the Republicans are going to say about the Democrats is at the root of this. And so as opposed to, um, you know, kind of letting them set the agenda, what Cara is doing, and I think what the broader movement that she is a part of, of, of progressives running across the country is saying, no, we are going to put forward actual mm. solutions that the people want. You know, I'm not sure if it's the Republican thing. I think it's an existential threat to their fundraising apparatus. That's what I think it is, which is is that the DCCC and a lot of these other people, I mean, they make a lot, and they get a lot of their power from getting these new congressmen. They have to come in, dial for dollars, literally in a cubicle, right, and call rich people and ask them to, uh, and ask them to give them money. I mean, I think this is a bipartisan money. establishment. It is, oh, that's course. what I mean. And so yeah. what I'm saying is, is like, I don't think the DCCC is like, oh, that's gonna brand us as like socialist or whatever. It's that she's not gonna raise any money for them, right? But I, I mean, yeah. in the sense of like yeah. human nature, sure. like you wanna be nice to people and yeah. you don't want, yeah. you don't wanna cause all of this infighting, which is the call of unity. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we have to produce growth and mm -hmm. out of tension, right, comes growth. And the, the pains right now of going through a democratic primary process to compete over what is the best agenda, what do voters care about, and actively engaging the electorate that right now we need to, right, get involved and engaged in some level if we want to take back our democracy on both sides, right? It, it just doesn't make sense to strain resources and to, I think, push out voters who see this as this, they'll, they'll see it for what it is, yeah. right? They want honest, authentic candidates yeah. who are at least going to say how they feel. Well, and, and I, think, I think that's the real fear is they worry they wouldn't be able to control her exactly. if she did make it to Washington. Yeah. And that's the real Can't danger. Can't control her fundraising. That's the Can't real control problem. how she votes. That's, that's really right. what it's about. <laughs> Alexander, always great to Thank see you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Next on Rising, could labor unions be the key to overthrowing the establishment picks in the 2020 primary? Writer Eric Blanc makes the case when Rising continues.